Hi, um, I've been asked lately to do up a little bit of a video about um, how Intello works with uh, two things, uh, one metadata and the other one searching for people by name. So I thought I'd uh, just put up a quick video and show you how we do that. So what I'm going to do now is open a copy of Intello, which is our email tool. So I'm just opening a new case, case will start up. The first thing that Intellis is going to ask me is what kind of evidence do I want to look at. I'm going to choose a PST file. I have uh, put my evidence in an evidence folder on my hard drive. This is a PST file. I'm going to say next, I'm just going to tell Intella via the wizard how to treat that and how to index it. I'm going to give it the name of B-L-A-I-R Blair that would be the name of the custodian so you can name each PST file or each file the name of the custodian next I'm going to calculate copies so that we've got um, deduplication and find by MD5 I'm going to extract archives and pictures I'm going to recover deleted data from PST files I'm going to cache the images so I get thumbnails and I'm going to say go ahead so what Intel is doing now is it's spidering uh, the PST file uh, a little bit like how Google does things, it, it uh, starts at the beginning so it looks at the PST, takes the information out of the PST then it goes in and says are there any email, if there is it takes a copy of the header and puts it in the database, it takes a copy of the body and puts it in the database if there's an attachment it takes a copy of the metadata of the attachment, puts it in the database, takes a copy of the content of the document, puts it in the database if there's pictures it extracts those pictures and makes a thumbnail of those pictures and then it continues on through the mail file doing that um, it understands a uh, myriad of file formats and reports the details on it the beauty of it is when you do a search for a keyword the keyword will highlight the document whether it's in in the header the metadata the document name in the body um, or any part or anywhere inside that PST the PST file that I've just done is 70 meg, just, just shy of uh, one or two cases, just shy of 70 meg, uh, 55 seconds. It's told me there's uh, 1,894 items in there. So I'm going to do a quick run through of the first thing people have asked me for is just searching for people, for communications between two people in one PST file. So the first one I'm going to do a search for is Rusty, and the next one is, you'll notice that it's not case sensitive. Um, once I do that, I get uh, three what we call clusters. We call one a cluster and multiple a cluster map. So I get a cluster map and three clusters. This is everything with the word Linus in it, and Linus being a name. And then this is everything in the database with the word Rusty in it. And of course, this is everything with Rusty and Linus. So if I go back here, this is everything with the word Linus in. As you can see, we highlight it. We show it whether it be in the header or whether it be in the content. And then this is Rusty. Again, we're showing Rusty in the uh, content and in the header if it appears in there and then of course these are items with both words in so here you can see we have Rusty and this one probably has Rusty and Linus in it as well so that's how we search data um, so it's very very quick there's another method that we could use to do this as well where we go down to the email addresses and we say okay let's come in here and look for all senders we'll choose our maps and we'll go through and we'll say ah oh, this person is part of this data set and, or we could add those per, that person in and say let's add them into our into our cluster map and see what emails they have that might be uh, similar or overlap with the other person I'll just clear that out if we come back again and we scroll down we can see there's a few people involved in this and then we could move down to uh, the all receivers so this is all people who've received emails so they're either a 2, a C or a BCC if we scroll down through here I'm going to find one particular one and I can see that Linus has 93 op options obviously you see it highlights them there and here you can see that we, we highlight where those particular emails are you can see the blue dots relate to Linus when we click off it so you can see which ones are involved in the data set so that's very very quick um, that's just using if we wanted to at any stage we could add Linus in and that would say okay these are all the emails from Linus this is the overlap between those two people so that's just quick and then of course once we do that we can just come through and actually look at the documents and read read the information read the header header is fully searchable search for things like um, message reference and SMTP IDs and message IDs looking for spoofed email um, so that's the first thing you can do so as you can see searching for people is, is pretty easy searching for email addresses we could search for Linus at 
and, and search for particular email addresses are pretty useful if you're doing things like at Hotmail, looking for people who are sending things to Hotmail for intellectual property theft. So that's that's uh, one kind of search. The other one that I wanted to do was one that's a bit more interesting. So people have asked me about how uh, Intel treats metadata. So I'm going to start off by doing a quick search for a couple of words, and then this will become a bit clearer. I'm just going to clear out my old search so that we've got a clear screen. So my first keyword is CIC22. My second keyword is A Blackshaw. A Blackshaw. And then my next keyword is M K H A N. And it's good to see that I can spell today. And J P R A T T. So what I've done is I've searched for four users' names. I have four user names. And um, this, to give you an understanding, those are usernames. And um, it's highlighted one document has all four of those users in it. Now that that's quite interesting from the perspective of one document reports to have four users have had taken part in that document. If I come up to our author tab, we might be able to see that a little bit clearer. If I come along and I look at the creator and the contributor tab, now creator in Intella is always taken from the author field. So in Word, the author field, or in uh, PDFs, also the author field, and contributor which we see the most activity here. Contributor is the last author or uh, last saved or last printed. It's somebody who's contributed to the document. Okay, So if we have a look here, we get this document when we do that search for those four people for the word Blair.doc. Okay. To give you a little bit of a run through, there's a website called computerbitesman.com. If you Google Blair or you go to computerbitesman.com, you'll get a much better story on exactly about this document that I'm about to tell you. But the bottom line is this document was uh, issued by uh, Tony Blair on the 10 Downing Street Org website and it was one of the documents that Colin Powell took to um, the United Nations Security Council for weapons of mass destruction. When the document was released there was uh, a few people that said the document had been plagiarised. Um, and again, Computer Bitesman gives you the correct story. I might be getting it slightly wrong here. But a person got hold of the document off Tony Blair's website and decided to have a look at the metadata in the back end of the document to see if he could understand who'd written the document. When he did that, obviously this is the document, so Intel has extracted all the text for us to read the document. This is a Word document you can see by the icon. If we come to the properties, it starts to get a little bit more interesting. We can see obviously the title and the size. We can see the last content created, content modified dates inside the document. We can see that the language is English and the application is obviously uh, Microsoft Word. If we scroll down, when the person looked at this document, they, they saw this. They The website clearly shows this. Saw that there was these names here. Well, these here appear to be what you know what we know now to be uh, usernames. Um, and this one's CIC. Um, when the user actually went back and said, okay, I, I want to talk to these people, see who these people are, let me reverse engineer these out, um, it turned out that he could actually find the exact people that uh, took part in this document, and he traced this person, bottom line, this person back to being a junior press, press secretary in the government. So this person was quite junior, and he, he had some people to talk to. Bottom line is um, one of the ministers got called in, or the person in charge of this division got called in for, for um, discussions. But this shows how how important looking at metadata can be. Um, Intella, Intella in, in my mind, is a great tool for looking at, at metadata. We, we try to extract as much metadata from documents as we can. Um, this is a Word 2000 document. Um, unfortunately, in Word 2007, for the forensic community, they took out the ability to save the revision history. Um, but let's just very quickly uh, have a look at, um, if I come along to type and I look at documents, and then I'm just going to load everything into my window so I can see everything in the case. I'm going to clear out these ones while that does. And I'm going to come along to my... This is everything in my case. I'm now going to come along to my type facet, which breaks everything up into the type of document that it is. If I have a look at MS Word 2007 documents, I can again see the content of the document, and I also have the properties of that document. So here you can see that the template that this document was made from was one called Gardening and Nursery Document. Really useful if you're looking for intellectual property theft, uh, where you're looking at somebody who says they never took the document, but if you search for the template name and that turns out to be the company who, they, who, who said the document was stolen from, it's pretty hard for the guy to say that that document didn't originate from a template or inside that organisation. So guys, there's two, um, there's two information. Just to quickly show you that uh, this Word document has a picture in it until it has extracted the picture and made a thumbnail.
So just in general, there's um, a little bit of information about how Intella does A, searching for names, and B, we also try to put a little bit of information inside here. Sorry, it's probably just going off your screen about what each field is. We, uh, the, the concept of the tool is to make it easier for lesser trained people to use um, so that you can you know, the forensic guys can spend a bit more of the time doing the detailed work, maybe using end scripts to extract certain stuff out and then give it to a person to actually review. Um, Alright, thanks very much. I hope that was enjoyable. Uh, I'd love to get your feedback.